you twist your tongue in Chinese? How does a starfish fish? And how do you measure an earthquake? Oh, no! Can I make 20p out of thin air? Even you can't make 20p out of thin air. <laughs> Definitely not. Worth, Definitely not. Worth money, I think. Absolutely worth, worth 10p. 10p. In the pot, 10p this each. This is a sure fire bet, this one. Definitely. How many 20p's am I holding up in front of me? Two. Two. So if I show you that I'm holding three, I would have made 20p out of thin yeah. air. Right? Yeah. Wait for it. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. There. You've Hang on. Yeah. There are three there. there are You've th just got one out from underneath when yes. you put your hands down there. Jeez, I haven't. You yes, you did. If I stop, look. There's only two. If I start, oh. there seems to be three. It's actually an optical illusion. If it's an optical illusion, yes. how have you made 20p? Mm. Easy. I've won the bet. I've got your two tens. That's how I've made 20p from thin air. <laughs> Life is not fair. How do you measure an earthquake? Well, the first thing you have to understand is why and how an earthquake occurs. Now, most of us think of the Earth as being perfectly solid and stable, but the reality is that the Earth is constantly changing. Now, if I were to unwrap the surface of the Earth, I'd end up with something like this, this jigsaw puzzle, because the surface is, in fact, split into sections known as plates and the lines along which they're pieced together are known as fault lines because these are in fact very weak points in the earth's surface now that would be all right if the earth was completely solid but it isn't because inside here is an enormous amount of liquid which is constantly churning around so if we were to put the jigsaw puzzle on top of liquid we can begin to see why we get earthquakes because the plates start to rub together and create enormous amounts of vibrations which go traveling through the earth's surface causing earthquakes but earthquakes don't just happen in exotic places like los angeles they also happen in britain because there are a number of fault lines in britain have a look at this map you can see the fault lines there and these actually generated 300 earthquakes in britain last year mind you they were quite small we only felt 50 of them and even those were sort of slight tremors but how do you measure earthquakes you do that by using one of these which is known as a seismometer now a seismometer will be placed away from traffic away from normal vibration on a piece of solid rock and it's made up of a copper coil. You can just see the bottom of the coil there, which is underneath this magnet. That's the gray bit. And as the earthquake happens, deflections occur. And as the copper coil goes up and down through the magnet, it generates a small amount of electricity. The bigger the deflection, the more the electricity that's generated. But how do you record all of that? Well, you record it on something that we've got over here. Here is the seismometer. This is the Earth's surface that I'm standing on. And this up here is what's known as a seismograph, because this is going to record all the deflections for us. And down here, you have an electric graph, which is a copy of the one above. So, oh, I can feel, I can feel the earthquake coming. Everything's deflecting, everything's moving around, and the seismometer is recording all of this. It's sending the current through to the seismograph, and that is how you can measure an earthquake. Ah! Carol creating her own earthquake. Now, how does a starfish fish? The thing about starfish is they're very partial to shellfish. But of course, shellfish themselves are rather partial to staying inside their shells. So how does the starfish get inside there? All will be revealed in just a moment. It's a gruesome tale. But before that, let's take a look at these quite wonderful creatures, starfish. Now, they've all got at least 
five arms, or should they perhaps be legs, but some of the more exotic species have as many as 50. Now, I've got this chap upside down because I want to show you these tentacles here, which have a nice gluey, sticky end to them. And how they use those, I'll show you in a moment. And on the end of each arm or leg is a very primitive eye. And why they're so clever, these creatures, is if they lose one of these arms or legs, they simply grow another one. Mm. But how does the starfish fish? Come with me now to Fred's Starfish Restaurant, where the gruesome truth will be revealed. Welcome to the Starfish Restaurant. Good evening, sir. Ah, good evening. Would you care to see the menu? Oh, yes. Um, oh, I say, but clams, are they good? Clams, sir? Marvellous. Freshly caught today. Oh, lovely. A nice big clam, sir? I do love a clam. Yes, yes. On the way, sir. Thank you very much. <gasps> Here we are, sir. It's a whopping meat enormous. And freshly caught, sir. Mm. Now. Watch what happens. Remember those suckers on his arms or legs I mentioned? He uses them to pull the shell apart, yes. slowly but surely. And when he's done that, he turns his stomach inside out and then begins to digest the contents of the shell. And then, when he's satisfied, he turns his stomach back outside in. Lovely. And your sweet, sir? You're very nice yourself. Gruesome, but true, because that is how a starfish fishes. How do you twist your tongue in Chinese so that I can speak Mandarin Chinese? I'll need to be able to read it first. And here is someone who does speak Mandarin Chinese, Xiao Zheng. Hello. Um, what is this character that you've drawn here? This character means ma, mother. Oh, the Mandarin word for mother is, is the same almost as the English word, ma. OK, that is... Ma, is that right? No. Oh. What you just said uh -huh. is a word for a kind of plant. It's written like this, and it's pronounced ma. OK, so the Mandarin word for mother mm -hmm. is ma. Well, what you just said, it's another word. Oh, dear. <laughs> it means yes. horse, pronounced ma. OK, let me try again. The Mandarin word for mother is ma. OK, well, you just said it's another word. Oh, dear. It's a word. And what does that mean? To swear, I'm sure you never do. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. So where am I going wrong? You see, Chinese language, tonal language, and the meaning of words depends whether your voice is rising or falling or not. For this one, for example, it's a flat tone. It's uh -huh. ma, and that one, ma, the word for horse, it's falling and then rising. The last one, to swear, is a falling. So it's ma, 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 ma. OK. Ma, 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 ma. Very good. All right, so much for the basic Xiao Zhang. Now I'm going to attempt a Chinese tongue twister of 26 characters long. Can you read that for me? Right, it's 44个石狮子要吃44个色柿子和44个死狮子. Fine, and I've got to say that, have I? Right, OK. Underneath here, not only is there a translation into English, there's also phonetic guidelines, so I can actually read it and take a good guess at how to pronounce it. And knowing the Chinese, this will be a piece of incredible wisdom. And what it actually says is 4104 quantity stone lions want to eat 4104 quantity wrinkly plums and 4104 quantity dead lions. Shoshan, can you read the first three for me, please, so I get a start? 44. OK, my attempt at a Chinese tongue twister. Here we go. How did I do? Not that good. Not that good. How did I do? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> that bad. So if you want to say 44 stone lions want to eat 44 wrinkly proms and 44 dead lions, in Mandarin, <laughs> that's how. <laughs> Thank you. Shishi. You're welcome. Shishi. How can I make things fly through the air simply with the power of thought? Well, here I have 
a disc. And if I simply place it down on this plate and think about clouds and air and flying and will this to leap into the air. It yes. works. I Eureka. did it. No, it was me. It was the power no, of thought. Me. No, in fact, boys, it wasn't the power of thought at all. It was the knowledge of science. So, how does this work? Well, to give you a clue, it is in fact made of two separate discs of different metals and they have been sandwiched together. How does it work? Well, another clue. Here is a bimetallic strip. That's the name given to something made of two different metals. One metal on the top, one metal underneath. When I heat this, watch what happens. It starts to bend and the more I heat it, the more it bends. But why is it doing that? Well, metals, when they're heated, want to expand. They want to get bigger. But different metals want to get bigger at different rates. So if you can imagine, this is one metal, this is another. And in a bimetallic strip, one is placed on top of the other. Different metals want to get bigger at different rates, so how do they do it? Well, the green one, wants to get bigger, so it has to bend the whole thing over so that the green one is actually now longer than the purple, mm -hmm. just like different lanes in an athletics track. That is how a bimetallic strip works when it's heated. But what about the little clicker? Well, the clicker is in fact made with a certain shape to start with. It has a little curve. When I heat it in the palm of my hand, it clicks in the opposite direction because the metals have heated up. When I put it down on the plate, it simply cools down and wants to get back to its original shape and pops up in the air. But what use are these? Well, they're actually used as switches in a lot of electronic equipment. They're used in central heating. They're also used in toasters. Now, here is the bimetallic strip. In this particular toaster, it's down here. So it's near the heating element. When the toast is put in, the bimetallic strip starts to curl as it gets hotter. And at a preset temperature, it would, will actually click the switch back up and the toast pops up. So that is how bimetallic strips work. And that is how a bit of metal can make perfect toast. That's how. How can you make a more mobile mobile? I've got two mobiles here. This one's lovely, but it's a little bit uninteresting. This one, on the other hand, is extremely interesting. It appears to be highly irregular and highly eccentric and almost unbalanced. It isn't, of course, and that's the secret of the whole thing. How do you make something weird and wonderful like that? Actually, quite easily. You would think, would you not, if you put extra weight on one end, the thing would become totally unbalanced. Yeah. Yeah. And of course it does. That is, until you move the point of balance. Ah. It's a matter of understanding the workings of the fulcrum mm -hmm. and the lever. Which you do, of course. Absolutely. Come with me. We're going to make our own highly mobile Excellent. mobile. Yes. And lesson number one is, mm -hmm. you've always got to remember that you build... From the bottom. Upwards. Yes. Now, where do you reckon my point now, of balance is? Now, I think that's in the middle, because these two weights are the same. That's, so that's in the middle. Yeah. Onwards. That goes there. And upwards. Yes. OK. And then I find the point. Now, this, you, you find the point, because this weight times that distance is, must be the same as that distance times that weight. Correct. Oh, well done. Point of balance there, yes, we think. that's fantastic. And upwards. Fantastic, marvellous, super. There. Yes. Already. There. We're getting oh, a more yes. mobile. It's very mobile. Mobile. Yes. How about a more massive? Bigger. And better. Bigger. Shall we? Yes. Come on then. And here we are, our little family of mobiles. Oh, aren't they lovely? Very nice oh, indeed. Yes. Attach Flip that to there. Out. And that's isn't that lovely? This is beautifully yes. balanced now. This Even end is a little eccentric. And at the other end, of yes. course, we have the heavy weight ah. to make it ah. completely balanced. You but sure of course, this is a good idea. Right? Well, there's only one way of finding out whether it is completely balanced or not. Okay, you ready, yeah. Gareth? Yeah. yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Wait yeah, for me, more Brad. Spin, more I think. spin. A it's quite more spin mobile, isn't it? Well, that's what it's I call a mobile mobile. Quite, it's yeah. fairly irregular, isn't it? Yeah. Watch out! There we are then. That's how you make a more mobile <laughs> mobile. And that's how, how for now. now. Fancy a cup of tea? Hey! Yeah, Come on. Go 
lovely being around here.